Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Let's go all the way back to 2011. After nearly 4 years since their Phenom processor launch, AMD was determined to shake up the CPU market and have built a lot of hype around their new, bulldozer-based FX processors. Unfortunately, those Zambezi-based processors did not deliver on AMD's promise, offering mediocre at best single-thread performance while consuming more power than a comparable Intel chip. And that's not even the worst of it. Those claims of world's first 8-core processor resulted in a class action lawsuit for false advertising and AMD agreed to pay $12.1 million. With the small history lesson over, let's finally look at this top offering from the second generation of FX processors, the 8350. Released in October 2012 for 199 USD, this Vishera based processor was manufactured on a 32 nanometer process and featured 8 cores. Those were clocked at 4 GHz base and happily boosting up to 4.2, and CPU was operating 125 watt TDP. FX8350 officially supported DDR3 memory speeds of up to 1866 MHz, and with some luck, you could go even faster. Originally, I was planning to use this cheap Biostar motherboard. However, after many, many hours of random inconsistencies, this board gave up the ghost. Turns out, the board arrived with some existing damage, but I didn't notice. Anyway, let's go over to today's test setup. I really hope this shot gives it enough justice, and trust me when I say, this has to be one of the best looking motherboards out there. To ensure we get the best out of this 8350, I've decided to use this godly Asus Crosshair 5 Formula Z. As for system memory, bad luck strikes again. I've tried three different memory kits between 2133 and 1866 MHz, and all of those simply refused to work. Finally, a G Skill Ribjaw said running at just 1600 MHz worked, but, to be perfectly honest, after 5 hours, I didn't care as much. Keeping temps under control is as always the H150i and I will be using RTX 3080 acting as a bottleneck. I've also fitted the test bench with two 140mm fans to provide sufficient airflow over the power delivery. Since all FX processors come with unlocked multipliers, I've set mine to 24 which resulted in 4.8GHz overclock. This required beefy 1.5 volts on the CPU to remain stable, which of course increased the power consumption by a lot. Measured by external power meter, total idle system power draw at stock was around 140 watts. Keep in mind, this of course includes 35 watts that was pulled by the 3080. At full CPU load, this jumped to 205 watts. Then, at 4.8 GHz, Idle was at 180 watts, and full CPU load pushed the total system power draw to 320 watts. Now, in Cinebench R23, stock 8350 managed 517 points in single threader test, and this put it slightly above the first gen Intel Core i7 870, which is also running at stock speed. When overclocked to 4.8 GHz, score jumped to 620 a nice 20% increase, yet marginally slower than the first Gen i7. Let's also not ignore the fact that the 8350 is faster than the A12 I've tested in the last video. Hooray! 8350 managed solid scores in 7-zips dictionary benchmark and outperformed even the overclocked first Gen i7 870, however, it was no match for the big daddy, the 990X. At stock, Blender car demo took 14 minutes and 32 seconds to render. When overclocked, time was reduced by around 20% to under 12 minutes. This puts it slightly ahead of the i7-870. Last task was to convert a 10GB 4K video file to fast 1080p30 preset using Handbrake. The FX chip did pretty well and even at stock speed, it was significantly faster than Intel's 870. Overclocking reduced this time by further 14% and even managed to beat 990X that runs at stock speed. 
Now, let's get those cores in action by running some game benchmarks, starting of course with F1 2018. CPU utilization was hovering around 60% and the 3080 was only used up to around 40. At stock speed, 8350 pushed 97 FPS on average and 1% lows were sitting at 58. Running at 4.8 GHz, averages improved by 8%, offering identical performance to Intel's first gen i7-870, but with better 1% lows. What do you think of this result? In third rally, FX8350 saw even lower usage at around 40%, but had no trouble beating the stock i7-870. Overclocking resulted in an additional 11% increase to averages, however, even with 104 FPS on average, it was no match for the overclocked i7-870. Deus Ex Mankind next. Here, the 8350 saw great usage of around 70% and even the 3080 was nearly at 50% usage. 8350 managed 78 FPS on average with 1% low sitting at 54 and for the first time beating all first gen i7s. Overclocking only lifted averages up by 6% but despite this it enjoys a nice 17% lead over the i7-870. Next up, Forza Horizon 4, and finally, this is the first time FX8350 saw some proper utilization, and the 3080 was also above 60% usage most of the time. At stock speed, 8350 pushed 90 FPS on average with decent 1% lows at 67, beating even the overclocked i7-870 by the smallest of the margins. But when overclocked, 8350 took the crown outperforming even the 990X by a hair. That's a great result for the FX8350. Shadow of the Tomb Raider puts good strain on any CPU and FX8350 was attacking 90% usage at times and the 3080 was at around 60%. At stock speed, I saw 77 FPS on average with 1% lows at 33. Overclocking pushed the average FPS to 87, which is a nice 12% improvement and good enough to be the i7-870. Up next, Rainbow Six Siege. Here, the 8350 traded blows with the i7-870 and pushed 149 FPS on average with 1% lows at 93. Even when overclocked, these two offer nearly identical performance. And then there's the pathetic A12. Next game benchmark was Far Cry 6. Here, the 8350 managed 54 FPS on average, outperforming the overclocked i7-870 by a small margin. When I overclocked the 8350, it managed to steal the crown once again, and with 59 FPS on average, it's clearly faster than any of the first gen i7s in this title. And closing of game benchmarks is Cyberpunk 2077. Once again, I saw great CPU usage, but not so much GPU usage. At stock speed, 8350 managed 56 FPS on average with 1% lows at 32, which was only marginally slower than the stock i7-870. Applying overclock improved averages by 7% and put the 8350 slightly ahead of the 870, but nowhere near the 990X. And that's that. The second generation FX was a much needed step up from the otherwise very disappointing initial bulldozer product launch. Lower power consumption and some performance gains are welcome, but was it enough? You see, even in the press slides, AMD compares the 8350 against Intel's Virgin i5 3570K. On paper, the 8350 looks like a winner, however, Based on the results of today's testing, I'm not convinced it had the upper hand even against the first gen i7 that was released three years prior, never mind the Sandy Bridge processors. That being said, it was not as bad as some people might think. What is really interesting, for some strange reason, 
you can buy a first gen Ryzen 5 processor along with an AM4 motherboard for less than most of the FX8350s and accompanying motherboard that are currently listed on eBay. I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you've ever owned an AMD's FX processor, let me know in the comments down below. I hope to see you all in the next one.